Hey everyone, John here, and in this Embroidery Medic, I'm going to look at a design that is meant to go on 100 finished baseball caps. So this is going on a commercial machine, and when you're dealing with a commercial cap frame, it is a curved surface, and you always have to digitize from the bottom up inside out. So I'm going to take a look at this design that was done and see if I can tweak it just a little bit so that it's going to, number one, look good, number two, it's going to have as few stitches as possible and number three it has as few jumps and trims as possible those are the golden rules for making money with embroidery and being this is a larger order I want to make sure that this design runs well for the person doing the job Okay, so I can see that this design has 10,067 stitches, there is six color changes, and there's 24 trims. Now most importantly, I wanna see how this design sews, so I'm gonna to go to a quick redraw and kinda of see the sequence of it sewing, and that will help me to determine how I'm going to edit the design. Now first, I'm just gonna switch a couple of the colors here, and that way I will be able to work on this, and you won't see gray on gray, and hopefully what I'm doing will be a little bit clearer for you to view. Now if I look at this in a redraw, and I look at the player, it's doing the bottom part first, which is fine. It's sort of starting from the bottom of what's one side up to the top, and then it does the shield part, and it's going from the top down. Now that's kind of a no-no, so we're gonna change that. Then it does the border around the outside, and then it does the little laurels and the detail, and then it does some of the outlines. And if I'm looking at all of these outlines, I can see that when this was done, it looks like they made some modifications to the outlines and they, they look like they're offset. Now this tells me right away that they ran a sample, it didn't line up perfectly, so they started adjusting the outlines so that the sample ran, ran well when it was actually done on a finished hat. But that can be a little bit dangerous because if you take that same design and then you put it on a flat surface, the registration will be off all over again. So we're gonna resequence a whole bunch of stuff and try to make this sew out so that it's going to register perfectly. Now, we might add a couple of extra color changes, but I'd rather have extra color changes than misregistration. So looking at this right now, I'm going to take these objects right here, and let's just grab this outline, this border, and I'm going to move it up in the sewing order so it's going to do it right underneath of that first outline. So it's gonna do the sort of uh, you know scroll work and then it's gonna outline it right away. Then I can go to this lettering and it looks like it is already grouped together. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to put it next in the sewing order so it'll do that. And then I'm gonna take that outline stitch and if I can find it right here, it's right at the very bottom. And I'm gonna move that up in the sewing order as well so that it's going to complete all three of those pieces right at the beginning. Now if I do turn off my true view, I can see also that there is some gapping between these, and I know that this is a triple run. I've determined that they've gone three times around, which is not bad for having a nice bold running stitch around something, but that gapping kind of concerns me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that object, I'm gonna go to my uh, pull compensation effects, and if I take a look at the pull comp, it's set at the de default 0.2 millimeters. I'm gonna change that to point, let's try four first, so let's try 0.4 millimeters, hit enter, and that exaggerated it just a little bit. I might even go to 0.5 a little bit, and then there we go. Now, that's not gonna make too much of a difference, but I know that it's going to actually sew out a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. If I undo, yep, it's just a matter of, you know, 0 uh, 0 0.1 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters of spacing, but that's going to keep those outlines perfectly around that. And now already, if I look at the sewing order, it is going to do that first um, green stitch, then it's going to outline it, and then it's going to do the rest of the stitching as well. So I am going to come in here and do all three of those points so it's completely outlined, there's gonna be no misregistration, and then it's going to do the lettering and it's gonna be perfectly within there. That's my main objective. Now I also do wanna take a quick look at this. I'm gonna come in here and I know that it is at a default uh, you know, 15 degree angle. For the most part, the pull compensation doesn't look too bad, but I'm probably gonna play with this just a little bit, add a bit more pull compensation on these points right here so that I know they are going to 
you know, register. I don't have to worry about that one because I know that it's going to go over here. There's lots of pull comp there, so I think that one's fine. This side should pretty much be okay, but I'll exaggerate it just a little bit. This one looks okay as well, but I'm going to exaggerate it just a little bit as well. And that way I know that there's going to be no shifting on the outline. The outline's pretty thick, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So that should pretty much uh, ensure that I'm going to have a nice border around it. There's going to be no gapping of the cap fabric actually showing through. So that's the first part done. Now if I look at the next part here, uh, I didn't mind the way it started and stopped. It started at the bottom, ended at the top. So now if I look at this next object here, this is where I'll probably go in. And even though sometimes it makes sense to carve holes in small fills like that, I'm guessing right now we have 10,139 stitches in this design. If I hit the H key and I highlight those holes, and let's get rid of that one, and let's get rid of this one as well, and there now I have 10,111. So actually getting rid of those holes actually decrease the stitch count. And I know that that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but having a carved penetration and outlining little areas is actually working against you instead of for you. Number one, it adds more stitches. Number two, if I look at the start and stop, the stop is at the bottom down here. I'm gonna move it up towards the top portion of the design up here. And the start I'm gonna put at the bottom so that we're always moving from the bottom up. I don't want to go from the top down. And then I'm also going to take a look at that pull compensation. Again, this is at a 15 degree angle, but I have lots of room to play here. I can actually take this and make sure that I move these points so that I am going to uh, exaggerate that pull comp on there and make sure that everything's going to line up nice and perfectly. Let's take this one here move that right over there. This is a nice big border, so I do not need to really worry about anything shifting too much. Let's get rid of that one. Just kind of cleaning up all these areas. Let's exaggerate this one here and here. Let's move this over. And this should pretty much do it so I know I'm going to have a nice fill stitch underneath without having any issues up top. Again, might add a few more stitches to the overall stitch count of the design, but I know that it's going to sew out much, much better. So that is one thing done. So there is that object. If I look at the next object here, it does these two pieces, and that's fine. Actually, I, I might switch the order of those just so that that, uh, you know, if it does the fill and then does this piece right here, it's not going to move the registration too much, and then it can do that border around the outside. Now what I might do here is after I do that border, I might actually come here and have it stitch out the outline of this right away. Now this is where I'm probably going to make some adjustments. And just looking at this, actually let's go in here, zoom in real quick. And if I'm going to, I might as well redigitize this line. So I'm going to go to my uh, tool here. Let's go to digitize and I'm going to digitize a closed shape and I'm going to tell it to be a outline with a triple run and I'm going to probably start it down at the bottom over here so I continue that bottom up rule but this time I'm going to start right here and I'm going to digitize just outside. It looks like there's lots of pull compensation on this so I should be fine on the pull compensation front but I'm just going to go right to here that's a straight point and then let's go over here to curve, curve, and then this should be a straight point right here. Let's go curve, 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 straight point right here. And then this one, I'm just going to continue to curve around and I'm trying to over throw a tiny little bit on that object, but not too much right to here and hit enter. And now if I grab that point and turn it into that color, I now have that one done and it is down at the bottom so let's move that up to the top right here and then that is the one that I like this is the one that I didn't like let's get rid of that one altogether so delete it and now I have a border that is going to line up perfectly to that one now if I look at this I have the uh, you know stitches so it's going to basically come in here and do all of the objects again in sequence 
and let's just run through it. There is the fill, there's the, out, uh, the black outline right there, then I have the run stitch, then I have all the lettering, then I continue down and I'm going to do the fill stitch. I took out the holes. I'm going to do that red on the inside, then border around the outside. And then I'm going to do the black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize all of these uh, areas here. Now, I know this is a triple run and this is where there's going to be a little bit more work involved because I am going to see which was the first object for these little round holes that they digitized, which is right there. And then they went around counterclockwise through the objects. Now, I'm going to go in here and do a little bit of manual digitizing. So I'm going to go to digitize open shape. I'm going to uh, choose, let's say, my run stitch. So I want to have a single run. And I'm going to start right here and let's just choose a different color and I'm just going to go right here. Actually, let's just choose number 10 and I'm going to do this point right here, 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 and then let's go right around and go right on the line here, 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 and then let's hit enter. Okay. Now, the reason why I did that is I'm going to move this point right to there. Then I'm going to take this point and move it up right here so that I have a travel between the two. So if I look at this and if I see that my start point is at the bottom and my stop point is there closest to there, then it's going to go to the next object where I have a start and a stop over here. And then it's going to do the next object right here, which again, I'm going to change it so that I have my start right over here and my stop right over here. So then when I go back to my digitizing tools and I choose my digitize open shape, I'm going to put a point right here, 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 and continue to go around this object. And I'll probably go all the way around right till I get to about here. And then I'll drop a stitch in between and hit that one. So now if I look at that object that I just digitized, I'm going to bring it up in the sewing order so that it is going to be right in between those two. So it did this one, then this one to travel, this one over here, this one to travel. Then it's going to do this one here. Again, let's choose my start right down here at the bottom. Let's stop right over here where I'm going to travel back up, uh, up to the top. And then let's go back to my digitize open shape. Let's zoom in a little bit more so I can see it over here. And I'll just continue on my path and I'll just digitize right to this point right here. And let's travel in like that. And then I have that object, which I'm going to move up in the sewing order. And again, if I look at the sequence in which these are going, I just am continuing to have a path. And again, my start is going to be down here. My stop is going to be right over here so that when I travel to my next object, go back to digitize open shape and I'm going to continue on my path right about here and I can probably go right to that point. Let's do this one, drop a stitch in the middle and hit enter. And then I'm going to grab that object and again, bring it up in the sequence order so that I know it's going to travel between the two, hit the H key and I'm going to start and I'm going to stop. And that way I'm going to continue on the path and I'm just going to continue to digitize all of these objects so that they are going to be closest point. This is going to get rid of a whole bunch of unnecessary trims. So this does take a little bit more time, but it is going to be well worth the effort. So now that I have that one done, I'm going to hit the H key. Again, I want to start at the bottom and at the top. So it joins closest point go back to my digitize open shapes and let's digitize this one. I'm dropping a stitch in between all of these. I'll go right to here. Let's drop a stitch in there, hit enter, go back to here. And now I'm just going right up to this point right over here. And that way I go into my next object, hit the H key, start at the bottom and right here so that it finishes go back to my digitize open shape 
and continue to drop stitches. Because I'm dropping in the direction of the stitch that it's going in, it's going to literally disappear inside of there. Drop a stitch, it disappears. Enter. Now I'm going to go down to this part here. I'm going to bring it right to here. Go to my next object. Let's hit the H key. I can start there and let's just make sure that I stop right over here. That way it's going to continue on and put a penetration right in between. And this is where they kind of went off and wonky a little bit. Actually, I'm going to have to maybe change this a little bit. Uh, let's go over here and see what they did. Yep. Okay, so here I went off on the artwork a little bit too much. Here it's right on, and then this one I do need to fix up. So let's hit the H key. And this is where I can see that they've kind of digitized way off of the line. They were adjusting for misregistration, and that's something that I do not want to see. So let's just grab that one, and we'll get rid of that one altogether. Let's bring this one in right to here. That should fix that problem. Then once I am right here, then I'm here. And then now I can digitize my next object, which is going to be right here. And let's continue down right over to here. So that that is kind of confusing a little bit, but you will see that I'm just going to, after I'm done, delete a whole bunch of these stitches. So I'm going to put this one right to here. That goes then to here, and I'm going to change the start. And the stop needs to be over here now right so that it finishes there and then I'm going to go back to my digitize open shape and I'm going to put a point right here, 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 here and could probably go right to let's say here drop a stitch in between and then let's hit the enter and let's grab that one and go right in between those two and then make sure that I have my start point right here and my end point right over here and then when I continue on, I'm going to continue down this path right here and I will get back to where I started, which is going to be right over here. So there is all of my points. Now that that's done, I can get rid of that original one. If I turn the true view on, I can see that I have all my tra traveling stitches in place. And now because I want a triple pass, there's really only one pass of thread there, but I'm gonna digitize my open shape again. But this time I'm going to actually take it and I'm going to uh, come right over to here and go to digitize a closed shape. Let's start right here, cause that's where I ended and I'm going to go right along that original line. So right to there, let's follow that point, right over to here, let's follow this point, right to here, and then let's follow this point, all the way down back to the beginning, and putting in straight and curved points, I know it's going to automatically close, so it closed that one. I'm going to repeat it so it goes around one more time. And now when I take those two pieces, it should all go in sequence and it should pretty much line up perfectly. The only thing I'm going to go in and adjust ever so slightly is this one right here so it lines up and that way it is going to line up perfectly with all of these points right there like that. So now when I look at this, and let's just turn on the true view, you can see that that object is done, and I'm going to grab that entire color, and let's just grab that as a color at the very end, so you can see that it's the entire color on there, and I'm gonna move it up in the sewing order so that it ends right over here, and then I can actually do the last color. Actually, I could probably slip this one in, right in between these two. So let's do this one here, and that way it's going to be inside of that one. Go to my object list, and I can see that it's doing all these colors. It does that one, then it does the outline border, and now all I have to do, do is deal with these laurels, and if I look at these, I'm probably just gonna make a couple minor little adjustments to these, and let's just see here what's gonna happen. Let's go back one more, okay, and 
let's go here and let's go zoom in the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to grab that object, hit the H, and I'm going to probably change the direction of all of these little leaves. I'm going to actually change them so that they will go sort of like this as opposed to going straight out. I think that has a tendency to look a little bit more natural than it just spiking out like that. So let's just change those and I will continue to go down each of these and just change the angle just like this very quick to do it's actually the little orange square is the angle and you can always tell when it's an angle because the word angle pops up and that way this will look hopefully a little bit better than the other direction generally I like to identify each leaf individually and it has a tendency to look a little bit better going like that. Now that I've done that side, I can go to the other side and let's just grab this one. Same thing, I'm going to just start changing all of these angles so that they will basically look more like individual leaves. And grab this one here, this one here, make sure that they all change direction don't want to miss one because if you miss one then it will definitely look a little bit off this one here and we are almost done now the top is kind of digitized at one angle and I'm just gonna leave that as it is I'm not gonna really worry about going in I could go in and break that apart with my knife tool but I think it looks pretty good for the most part so now if I look at this and I'm going to see how this actually sews the order in which it sews. It is going to start at the bottom and then it moves up and then it outlines right away, finishes the outline so I know there's going to be no misregistration, does this from the bottom up, then it's going to do the stitching and the outlining right away, then doing the outlining around the outside, triple run but I traveled, got rid of those jumps and trims, and then I went right over here and continued that. So from the looks of it, I've gone from, let's see, we had 10,067 stitches. I did add a little bit of stitches, so we have about 500 stitches more. I actually have more stops or color changes now, but I have actually, it looks like 10 less trims than I had before. So we're gonna kind of balance out, but the most important thing is this design is gonna actually sew out well, registration should be perfect every single time, and it will have a more logical order in which it actually finishes. And if you sew it on a garment or a baseball hat, you should have the exact same results.